Zachary's been a longtime collaborator of ours. Um, yeah. And, you know, when we started working with her on a documentary series called The Lady in the Dale, we just realized like this person's going to be a part of our, of our family from mm. now on. Um, and so when I started writing the script for Biosphere, it was really half formed at best. It was about these two guys that were living in a dome. They were dealing with some toxic behavior in their past. They were trying to figure out, are they going to be able to continue with humanity? And then I brought it to Mel, uh, who runs our company, to co-write with me. And as a queer woman, she brings this perspective of, yeah. well, this is really interesting. So there's no females inside of here. What's going to happen? There's, there's, there's fish. The fish pond is going to be able to work itself out. And then we thought, oh, is there a chance for life to survive here? And if it does, I bet Zachary Drucker is going to have some things to say about that. <laughs> and we brought her in. And it was this constant process of, of each person with the baton realizing they were coming up against the limits of either their creativity or their authority to speak on a subject yeah. confidently and just reaching out into the wider community and saying, can you help me with this? Um, and it continues to this day, literally just kept expanding. Yeah. Uh, I think that I come from an environment in the Midwest in which there is rampant sort of run of the mill homophobia. And for me to be able to hopefully reach people who thought like that or think like that, who can identify with Sterling from other things in the world or whatnot, can enter into this journey and be like, oh, Sterling Brown's having some fun. Randall's not making me cry all the time. Let's see what mm. kind of jokes he's got to tell here. And then with that spoonful of sugar, hopefully there's an expansion in perspective of what it means to be a human being, of what it, acceptance looks like. And hopefully you can leave the theater being wonderfully entertained and also be like, oh man, he just opened my eyes up to another way of being in the world. That's That would be the hope. That would be the hope. First and most important thing is that um, I want people to be able to giggle with warmth. Um, it's my favorite <laughs> feeling in the world when I am laughing, not because someone is derisively and brilliantly taking someone down, yeah. um, but when they're doing it in a way that um, feels warm, but also feels sharp. It's very hard to do, and I'm constantly striving towards it. So I think Mel, as our director, achieved that. The goofy earnestness of this movie, the fable element that's dealing with some deep truths but in a light and really fun way i hope yeah. those click with people um and you know if i could hope for something a little bit beyond that i would say sometimes there's a movie you watch that kind of sticks with you and you don't really know why um and you end up thinking i really want to go watch that movie again yeah. uh, and i'm not sure um this would be the kind of movie where i feel like i think a second viewing could bring a lot for people yeah Oh, nice, it was wonderful. No, this, it, it, it. I am, rarely do you get a chance to work with the writer as an actor, um, or at least do I. I guess you do it all the time because you're the writer and actor in everything, except for the morning show. Um, but it was their ability, and I say their as in his and Mel's ability to share the space was really wonderful. There was never any sort of like automaton, this like not automaton, but like trying to make me do something that I didn't want it to do. They were incredibly collaborative and wanted my insight, thoughts, feelings, perspectives on everything that was transpiring within each scene. Uh, and like most of the time, Mark, being the self-deprecating kind of guy, he's like, if you don't like it, just say, say what comes natural to you in the moment or whatnot. Most of the times being what was on the page was like, this feels really good. I think I want to say that, but also giving me the permission if something else comes up in that moment, go ahead and explore that to its fullest end. Man, and you were so Great. good. You were so good with that. Cause you know, like Sterling's a theater guy too, you know? And he's a guy who shoots an hour long TV drama, which means you got to get those lines. You got to move fast. So, so having that flexibility to be able to come prepared, but also let it go so we can chase the chemistry sure. is critical. Yeah. And, you know, I had worked with Sarah Paulson on a movie called Blue Jay and, and they had worked so closely together. Yeah. So before we offered the role of Sterling, I, you know, I called, I called Paulson, you know, and I was like, do you think that he's going to like this? I know he's going to be capable of it. Do you think he's going to have a good time? And she was just like, I know you, I've spent a lot of time with you <laughs> and I know him and I've spent a lot of time with him 
and this is like a match made in heaven. So I, once once I got that, I was like, I know, yeah. I know this is gonna work. She was right. Paulson doesn't lead you wrong. No, nah, no, nah, she doesn't.